Hello everybody, welcome to this keynote. My name is uh, Roberto Capodieci and I am the CEO of uh, Blockchain Zoo. What I'd like to talk to you about today is the adoption of blockchain outside uh, the use of cryptocurrencies. And uh, we all know that blockchain is born uh, as uh, a tool uh, to make Bitcoin possible. But uh, <coughs> government the want to adopt blockchain need the blockchain to be separated from cryptocurrency and uh, to separate blockchain from cryptocurrency generates with the basis that the blockchain has today several issues if uh, uh, you think about the way that uh, most blockchain are secure it's all boiled down to financial aspects. Bitcoin is secure because of uh, the value of the currency compared to the cost of a 50% attack. Renting enough hash power to attack a blockchain based on proof of work is directly proportional to the market cap of the currency of that blockchain. We saw that uh, while Bitcoin remain quite solid and very expensive to attack, minor proof-of-work blockchain, such as Ethereum Classic, got attacked several times with 51% attacks. And 51% attack is the attack where a hacker or a attacker rent enough hash power to be able to rebuild a huge chunk of blocks uh, over the last block removing transaction he made to spend coin and rebuilding the blockchain without his own transaction is a way to double spend money in a blockchain and uh, all the security of such blockchain boils down in the cost of such attacks compared to the economy of uh, the total value of the coins of the blockchain Another kind of uh, protocol is proof of stake and stake it per se uh, means the amount of coin that uh, some account can stake in order to have uh, the authority to create blocks. The basis of a proof of stake uh, uh, blockchain security is the fact that uh, to make an attack to the blockchain the cost of staking enough coins make it so that the attack will only damage the attacker and not uh, match the rest of the economy because to attack the blockchain the attacker need to own the majority of the economy of the blockchain itself so one more time proof of stake is a security protocol the base is security on the cost of the attack compared to the value of the coin in the blockchain in the moment that a blockchain is used for different use cases for example the management of a medical record rather than uh, the transfer of title of ownership of real estate uh, or uh, the authorization uh, for uh, leaves of employees rather than grades uh, for the school for students uh, or many other use cases that don't have a direct connection to a currency in the blockchain or they manage titles that have uh, surely a higher value of uh, the currency of the blockchain so there are big big issues uh, let's imagine a blockchain based on proof of work that handle grades for students where a currency is used just uh, to to have it there because it's there in the blockchain that has been cloned to make this project well it would take very little for a smart student uh, they got a bad uh, grade, uh, probably not in mathematics, but in history or geography per se, to get enough uh, hash power and uh, rewrite the last part of the blockchain, removing the bad grade that he has taken. As much as uh, if uh, a blockchain is handling titles like the ownership of uh, a real estate complex that is worth billions of dollars, uh, and uh, the title, let's say, is recognized as legal by the government, uh, once somebody make the sales and receive the payment uh, then can easily attack the blockchain 
and remove the transfer of the title that has been recorded in the blockchain and the property remains his own property. So for this reason, there is uh, the need of a different uh, consensus mechanics. So it's not just a matter of uh, government, uh, uh, GovTech, RedTech to uh, adopt blockchain in general. They need to adopt blockchain that has uh, uh, mechanics of security that is not connected to finance, not connected to the value of the coin of the blockchain. For this reason, we have implemented a blockchain zoo, but uh, it's uh, a natural evolution of blockchain that uh, needs to happen, and we are happy to open conversation with many others. But the point is here is having a blockchain whose uh, consensus mechanics uh, is basing its security not on a coin, but on something else. So now a small parenthesis to understand uh, what is uh, the consensus mechanics in a blockchain. Well, as we know, a blockchain is a decentralized system, which means that there are many nodes possibly run by the different parties that are taking advantage by using the blockchain itself. And none of these computers that make the network is more important than the others. It's very important though, to code in the software that run those nodes a logic that make all the nodes do the same choice in front of a uh, uh, possibility of two different options. While the word consensus uh, give us the idea of people coming together, talking and agreeing on a common outcome, uh, on a common decision, in blockchain the term consensus is deeply different. The nodes don't come together to sit and discuss and make a decision. The node, in fact, don't ask any other node what they think about an option for a choice, but uh, they make a choice based on how they've been coded. So if uh, somebody can trick uh, the software of the node in making the decision that uh, is correct based on the code, but is wrong based on the desired outcome of the choice, uh, is hacking, is attacking the blockchain. For example, a 51% attack in a proof of work blockchain tricks the node to believe that the temper blockchain is more solid, more important than the one that they have in memory, so that all the node will drop the blockchain they have in memory, adopting the one provided by the attacker. And this is the base pretty much of every attack on a blockchain, preparing a choice that the node thinks is better than the choice that they already know. So the security that is made on a blockchain that depends on finance is usually based on the finance aspect. What we need is a blockchain with the security in the consensus mechanics, so a way for the node to choose which is a better blockchain that is not related to anything financial or anything related to a coin in the blockchain. So what we have created and what is the needed next step in the evolution of a blockchain is a consensus that bases the security on the participation of the nodes in the blockchain. So evaluates how nodes behave in the network and give a score on the nodes for being there for the blockchain, for upkeeping the blockchain and for keeping the blockchain solid and safe. In this way, the nodes have a certain score and their decision has a weight that is more or less important. They organize themselves, thanks to the consensus mechanics, in such a way that if a node cheat and get out of this mechanic, is punished, his score get lower until it's kicked out. So let's pretend a consortium of hospitals, for example, where each hospital runs a node, or a government situation where each province, each city runs a node, to maintain a set of information that they need to be sure that is correct when it's exchanged between one or the other party. They need to adopt a blockchain that just evaluated their node is there on and online constantly 
to be part of the network and the network is secured by these uh, mechanics. So for this reason, the study moved from proof of work, uh, proof of stake, uh, proof of uh, capacity, proof of, and there are many different proof, uh, to a proof of uh, participation. So blockchain without money is really about transparency, accountability, and a decentralized management of the information and the data. Because uh, in many use cases, they don't care about the cryptocurrency and uh, they are in need of a system to keep data stable. So think about this. We are all excited about blockchain. This meetup, uh, even if it's just online, is all about uh, blockchain. But uh, we need to think how the technology is going to evolve how is technology is going to go to the next step for a larger adoption outside the decentralized finance, outside all the ICO, IEO and all those things that are there. Blockchain need to satisfy the requirement of the party that want to adopt, that need to adopt to evolve in the information era in this next stage that is the decentralization. I always say we are in the early days of a blockchain as a technology. It's like when cars got first invented, somebody need to spin the things in front of the hood in order to start the engine. And that was normality at the end. If we look at cars today, the efficiency that they have in the use of the fuel or cars that are electric have brought and drive themselves, <laughs> brought an evolution that is uh, really literally hundreds of years, hundreds of years since the first car has been produced. So it's true that there is a lot of money that people is happy to make uh, when uh, they follow these hypes of uh, ICO and DeFi and so on and so forth. But the technology need actors as well that uh, take care in uh, evolving the technology from the bottom up. Furthermore, if we take a blockchain that use coins to do a solution that has no need of coins, we always fall into the finance regulation and regulator. They're going to step in and make the process harder. Many people think the blockchain is cryptocurrency. Blockchain is not cryptocurrency. It's like to say that databases are forum for terrorists or database are uh, matchmaking or uh, the, the, the engine behind a lot of illegal things, which can be, but uh, database is just a tool, it's just a technology. So this is, for, this is the case of blockchain. Blockchain is not cryptocurrency, it can be used for cryptocurrency, but blockchain is uh, a technology that can be adopted and used uh, to run uh, many different kinds of uh, businesses. Let's think how many use cases don't need really coins in a blockchain to function properly, but the blockchain is really the technology they need. Let's think about trade, international trade. Let's think about uh, business management, partnership, franchises, uh, and uh, well, loyalty point is a little bit like a cryptocurrency, but uh, uh, document management, uh, agreement, signature, uh, all the legal aspect of uh, documentation between different countries, between different parties, uh, uh, insurance, uh, all the insure tech, uh, and all the use cases that uh, are connected to the paperwork. Or title, title ownership, uh, ownership of a car. If a government uh, put uh, the, the the road regulation uh, managed on the blockchain, the police officer can give us a fine, which is recorded on the blockchain, uh, where there is the title of the car, the driver's license, uh, and so on and so forth. And the consensus mechanic is just the tip of the iceberg. Blockchain uh, that need to serve uh, use cases where uh, cryptocurrency is not there, they require natively to provide a lot of other functionality. For example, allow a third party to approve or disapprove a transaction. Let's say I'm purchasing a car, a title, and there is a notary or a government employee of the Office of Records of Cars that approve the transfer of ownership. Uh, there can be something as, uh, and we, we actually did this thing with great satisfaction, to sign transaction on the blockchain with an EID. So the 
identity cards that now are coming with the capacity to digitally sign, uh, to sign with a private key, using that private key to sign, thanks to the card, blockchain transaction. So blockchain transaction, for example, closing the contract for uh, uh, rental of a house uh, is valid in court of law in case one of the parties doesn't pay. So I leave you with this. Let's think to the evolution of blockchain. Let's think to the technology and not just to the hype that made a lot of us broke or rich based on the luck that we have. Thank you very much. And uh, you can come have a chat with us to our booth, Blockchain Zoo, and uh, talk with us about our technology, ZooBC.